Okay, uh, welcome. <laughs> so, Cedra has said, after the last one, she was like, the CDC is fucking up. And I'm like, I can see this is going to be a conversation, so I figured it'd be good to have the conversation, you know, and I hope you can stay on track for what you was going to say, to what I was going to say in all this. Okay. You ain't putting anybody on the spot, you know, me nor you, just maybe, you know, conversation. But and you said the CDC is fucking up. And my first thought was, no, they're not fucking up. And that's what I was going to say. No, they're not fucking up because they're corporate owned, they're corporate ran. You know, so the CDC's mission is to make sure the corporations are happy. Therefore, they have to make sure they say what they say to get you to feel okay to go back out there. That's what they want. But regardless, they're still fucking up. Even if they're catering to the corporate people to make them happy, they are fucking up. It's not fucking up. Okay. You do, you do your job. Mm-hmm. You do the task at your job. Mm-hmm. If part of your job is to misguide someone that needs help because you aren't either trained in something or you just don't feel like they don't feel like tackling it so they tell you to redirect them to some place where you know they're going to get the run around. Are you fucking up or are you doing your job? You're doing your job and your job is telling you to fuck up. How is it fucking up if it's your job? Yeah, when your it comes to being be murdering people, but that's <laughs> when it's your job. Here's the thing. Common decency is malicious. You know, a fuck up is a mistake. A very bad mistake. But that's what it is. They aren't fucking up. They are literally on task. They are doing their job. They are, their mission, their job, their policy is to say whatever it takes to get you back out there working. And it's not about spreading the virus. It's about getting you to spend money to help these corporations. So they can't fuck up when it's their duty. Okay, then they're fucking over. It's a fuck in there and it's it's happening. It's a fuck. (laughs) Over? Yeah. (laughs) I don't give a shit about the corporations. I don't give a shit about how they're connected to them, who they're fucking, who they're sucking. They're fucking over the people. They're fucking up. You don't care. But that's the thing. That's how they stay where they are. People don't care. I mean, I don't, not that I don't care that what they're doing. I don't care about the rhetoric that surrounds it. You strip it down, good and bad. They're doing bad. That's it. You don't have to dress it up. You don't have to put lipstick on it. You don't have to make a $2 whore like a $100 whore. It's still a $2 whore. When people care, people change their vote. When people care, they think about who they're fucking. They think about who they're taking on dates. They think about who's in bed with who. They think about those mergers that happen. Who in the CDC is taking money from what corporation they care about that and when they see and understand the link of all of that and how that affects them that's when they're like okay I'm done with this you have murdered us it's, mo- it's no different than how the government hasn't stepped in when it comes to Nestle stealing a, a, a fuck ton of water from California that's in a drought it's, it's when they don't give a shit about chemicals that are absolute cancer causing in our foods and drinks and in some water supplies. It's when they, when they can literally allow nasty contaminated water in half the states, Flint, Michigan being the first and worst to be acknowledged. Not the, we don't know what the first is, but it's the first worst to be acknowledged. And what did they do? That's, that's government. It's supposed to be looking out for the people, right? But instead, but they, they instead allow the company to say, well, blame black people for not paying their water, uh, water bill because if they paid the water bill, then we'd have enough money to clean this crap out. Saying that while taking a lot of subsidies, welfare checks from the government to put in their pocket. From taxpayers. Yeah, I get that. It's how government uh, government operates. It's not good for you, but it's good for us. And what I'm saying I don't care about is the pretty rhetoric. 
You can dress it up and say they're doing their job. Okay, Rubio, Cruz, all them fuckers are doing their job, but they're fucking up. They're being bad, they're being awful people, and they're fucking us over. And they're, I can see I can't, that. They're fucking us over, but I just, I know it's a nitpick, but I can't say they're fucking up. I, the okay. reason I say that is because that is their mission. That is their goal. That is their that purpose. That is their mission. That is their goal. That is not their job. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Their job is to be statesmen. They just don't do it. If Their job is to be for the people. They just don't do it. They're bad at their job on purpose. They don't do their job on purpose. They got their own mission to get rich and die happy. Okay, fine. They're doing that, but they are not doing their job. None of them. What the job entails, no, they don't. The reason that these people don't have to do their job is because we the people don't make them do their job. In all honesty, if people understood what the job was of each person and, and all this, the people would just revolt in general. But right now, with a lot of states trying to adopt the stand your ground, because if you are afraid, if you white and you are afraid of a minority, you can say you fear for your life, pop a cap in them. Mm -hmm. You're scared. There was a woman that was on the floor. And I saw this on last week tonight. Um, and she talked about y'all being scared just because of my face. Just because of how I look. Y'all are afraid for your life. And while she's saying this, you can see in the background how these, honestly, how these white people in the background just don't give a shit. You can see they're not paying attention. Like, we hear you, but yeah, you'll eventually go away. Just like Ted Cruz, you know, when he was around the, the white people that was digging into him, and he was feeling on his phone. He didn't give a damn. Mm -mm. Not one damn. Because they, they all know nothing will come of it. Yeah, because we eruption time, they'll go out there and they lie, and I'm afraid of the same things you're afraid of, and I fear the same things you fear, and we're together, and they'd be like, yeah, tribe, and put him back where he is. And that, it ain't, the, the, the government ain't fucking up. It's the people who are fucking up. The voters are fucking up. But how bad to them are they fucking up? Do they even know it? They even know it. It's like, well, I want to be able to protect myself. I should be able to protect myself. You can protect yourself if you're white. You can't protect yourself if you are a minority. That's just how this country is. If the minority is afraid for his or her life and brandishes a gun that's unloaded and deters the attacker that person that brandished the unloaded gun still goes to prison, still loses the job, and demonized as the bad girl as she was. That's what happens. If you're white and you shoot and or kill people in the shoot them in the back, you're a hero. No matter if they're black or white, but if they're if they're if they're minority you know, then yeah, you're a grand hero, but if they're white, then it's like, you know, you got to paint it as Second Amendment. You got to paint it as stand your ground as being a patriot because that's the only way you're going to be able to get by that. That's what happens. So, with so many people split into so many factions, so many tribes, as you said, tribe them up, get them out there and they have no idea how they're hurting themselves there are more guns than people by far in the United States of the Americas and you know what's that common saying we've heard for the past 15 years if you got a hammer everything becomes a nail mm -hmm. and humans so much want to belong to something no matter how fucked up it is, I'm with a group. I'm great. 
I feel productive. I feel like I'm with people that care about me. I feel like I'm on the on the right team. It's the feeling, not the reality. And Ten years later, you wake up. I'm in a damn cult. They're banging my daughter. What the hell's going on? Well, you for you belong. There you go. Yep. See that guy over there on top of your daughter giving you the thumbs up? That's why. Like, but she's seven. Hey, you got to get him in as soon as you possibly can. Don't you feel warm and cozy? Don't you feel a part of something? It's almost like if you want to give your young child to someone that you trust so much because they're wearing a robe and you're wondering why they, their ass is bleeding. I don't know. You know, you want to why that why your kid get around the preacher and start hollering. You want to know what's wrong. You know, yeah, that picks on religious people and that definitely will turn them off to this. But you, but when you keep denying it, that's where the problem is. Can't deny it. You got to acknowledge, hey, this shit is out here. You have to think about the well-being of yourselves and of others over the warm and cozy feeling of needing to belong. If you get a gun, just think about it. You're holding a weapon. It's not a tool. It's not a tool. It is a weapon. You have a specific gun you have bought. And ask yourself, how many times has your home been broken into? And if you can't try to defend your home then, but you can when you have a gun, imagine how weak you really are. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if I'm sitting here right now and that window crashes in, it's going to be about one to two seconds of shock of what the fuck before I'm going to get up and start wailing on something. And I got a lot of things around me. It's going to be some fucked up shit. And when it's over, I'm going to be pissed that my area is ruined because this is all I got. This little bitty area. <laughs> this little bitty four and a half by five is what I got. And the freezer takes up two and a half of that. So, you know, shit, I'm going to be mad that my area is messed up. But if that happens again, and then I'm more prepared, I'm, oh, I got a knife right here, I'm going to stab him in the neck and they're going to bleed out. And it's, you know, now there's a pile of bodies coming through the window and I'm trying to figure out what is up with my window. But then I have to go out and get a gun. Look, I can say I've successfully defended my window. Or at least I've defended the rest of the home. Can't say too much for this desk area. I mean, obviously, I'm going to have to move it. But I'm going to have to do something different because getting owning a gun is not defending your family. And shooting people in the back is not defending your family. Shooting a girl that's concussed in the back of the head is not defending your family. It's not standing your ground. Shooting people across the yard into someone else's yard is not defending yourself or standing your ground. And see, those are two conflated, conflating two points. Guns aren't the problem. It's the people who get the guns. That's what. The, that's where you got to, the. The problem is between the one getting shot and the and no. The problem is the one holding the gun. Okay, the, gun for sale. Gun for sale. What? That's it. Gun for sale. What you gonna do? Buy it or look at it? And you can't wait to shoot somebody. You know who you are. These mentally ill people out there can't wait to get the gun. Exactly. It ain't the people that own the so, gun. It's the people selling it. It's, it. If your child has diabetes by the age of six, it's not, it's not because they have so much candy. It's because the parent keeps giving them so much candy. I get that. But if you got a mentally ill person trying to buy a gun, there should be steps in place to prevent that. Yeah, but they can't do that because if they do that, then they're saying, damn, we're coming down on the white people and we can't do that in this country because black people ain't trying to own guns like that. Black people ain't trying to, to own so many guns that they, they could be classified as terrorists. Now, they ain't saying that none of them. Now, there's a couple. I've known one. One. But in general, white people got guns off their ass. You know, you watch movies. If yeah. you watch movies, no, seriously. If you watch movies, how is it portrayed? Black people got just caches of guns. Or that one big barrel cannon one. The Hispanic got like trunks of or duffel bags of guns. Okay? 
Asians have two to three guns and never run out of bullets. <laughs> White people have like the most basic gun that they know how to work in and out with no problem. And they got like one or they um, they've got one gun, but then shit jump off. And then you find their big ass cash underground somewhere kept clean, dust free for that for the emergency that they've waited for like 10 and 20 or 30 years to happen. But they're very responsible about it. Mm -hmm. They don't go out with the gangs like the other, like the minorities shooting every goddamn thing. Or the white people got the guns that are like high tech and futuristic behind a wall or some shit like that. Mm -hmm. That's what's messed up. Yeah. You know, white people got the gun. They don't really get shot up too much. They might take a bullet. Might. But they're probably pop they're popping people left and right. One woman, uh, Taraji played her, and she had the little stash of guns and money. Oh, Queen Mary. Yeah, and she got shot Proud up. Proud Mary. Proud Mary? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she got shot up. She got shot up. It, but, you know, it made sense because she was fighting over a whole lot of people. Uh-huh. Just like anybody else, but she got shot up. Mm -hmm. You know, movies portray a hint of reality, and reality keeps trying to portray everything in the movie. That's the problem. The problem is the sales. You've got to stop the sales. If you well, when you got the national the National Rifle Association pumping a few million dollars here and there to certain legislators, then those things will never go away. They need to be regulated. They need to be dealt with. Yeah. And money is stronger than two things, principle and policy. And that's when it comes back to the people. The people have to find those to vote for that will stand by a policy of we are going to regulate the guns like crazy. We are going to have severe background checks. We are going to defund the police and issue absolute brand new, without amending anything, new police policy procedures. Here's the problem. People can get out there and campaign and say anything. Yes, so so you're saying since people can lie on the campaign trail, which when it comes to the two parties, they do. They do. But when it's not in those two parties, when you're brand new on the scene, usually what you want to do is stand by your convictions because mm -hmm. that's the only way you can get properly validated. So if you got somebody that's in a, a new party or a current weak but at least they're their green party and they stand by their principles mm -hmm. and you vote for that person mm -hmm. that's standing by their principles and their policy and they get in and they want to shake heads up and they don't want they I ain't here to make friends I'm here to save lives mm -hmm. I'm not here to work with the left or the right I am here to work for the people mm -hmm. and you vote someone like that in mm -hmm. and that person says these other people are running for these offices. You need to vote for them. Mm -hmm. They stand with me. They stand with and for you. And they are going to make sure that these policies get enacted in their district, in their state, in their county, province, or what not ever. Okay? They're going to help get this right. Mm -hmm. And they all vote those people in. And those people actually do it. That is, that is it. That is the rug, my dear man. If. if those people actually do it, you got to put on your hope hat and your hope gloves and go to the ballot and, and put your hope ballot in and tattoo hope to their ass in hopes that they'll do what the fuck they say when they get there. And do you know why we have to have hope? Because shit is so bad that nobody has it. Well, might as well vote for the two party system because it's going to be the same thing no matter what. And it's like, I get you. I hear you. But if you don't like what's happening, change your vote. And you it's, change it's, your vote and you just... I... The vote, the two parties are a wall. Your vote is your head. Okay, but let's, let's... Two parties, no parties. No parties at all. You still have to hope 
that when they get there, yes. they stick to what they're going to say. Because the corporations yes. aren't going nowhere. And they got that money, man. They waiting. They waiting to help you fly off the merry-go-round and join the others. And if, it sucks. It sucks. All you need is people that say, I am not taking your money. I am working for the people. Here's the thing. I know I'm like that. I'm, I'll be like, fuck you and your money. No. If we took this money, we'd be able to pay off these kind of... Fuck that shit. Why do we got to have extra money to pay off things that we shouldn't have had in the first place? Get away from me. That's just me. I I just want better for people in general. You know? That's what I want. But people got to want better for themselves. They want others to want it for them and do it for them without them having to lift the emotional finger to actually change their mind and do it for themselves. And it's not going to work that way. No one can motivate you into being a better person, a smarter voter, or anything like that. You know what it takes to be a smarter voter? You look at what's been going on for 40 years and say, nothing's changed unless I change. And in the, every individual change. And then you get mm, change. That's how you do it. You just wake up and just say, wait a minute. Republicans are work. Just think about it. The Republicans were all right with not only Texas freezing over, but the power company that fucked them over to hike their prices. The government's all right with that. No one stepped in and said, you know what, power company? Fuck you. You're done. You're the, government, the government's all right with all kinds of shit. The yes. government's all right with no, no, no. no one's, money. No, no, you didn't hear me. People are not thinking that the government is all right with that. Then no one stepped in. Well, AOC, she raised $5 million. I don't give a shit. So she raised $5 million. And that's not going to get rid of the people that allowed this shit to happen and still haven't fixed what messed up in the first place. They still haven't fixed it. Mm -hmm. They still haven't winterized the things that they could have done 10 years ago that would have prevented that mess. Mm -hmm. You had 10 years to fix something and you didn't. Why? Because the plan was as soon as it fails, we get to charge them as much as we want for their, for their power to come back on. And they knew it. They knew it. And they've already got more than, more than enough money for their, their, their generation, their kids, their grandkids. They got their, their generational wealth well in hand. But they want to take more money from you. They're a bunch of hoarders. There is disease in the head as the folks on the TV show living with the dead cats up to the ceiling. Yep. This, people, this stuff is true. These things are happening. This is some real shit. This stuff is nasty all over the country, and it's not going to stop until we make it stop. It's that simple. So, we'll get up on out of here. I hope I, I hope you enjoyed this. This was just a straight up conversation. This is just how me and CJ would talk in general. But hey. We're looking out for you. That's why we say what we say and do what we do. This is Ms. Cedric and Cedric for Comparative Reasoning. Thank you for listening.